Come in. Come in, come in. How small. You say the precious stones are all in this one place? And are worth a quarter of a million? Raj Botana's pearls alone are worth more. If we agree to go to this place of yours, wherever it is, to find out the truth of your story... Will you come back? Give me and my pals a chance to escape? Yes. See? A sign of four. There are four of us in this. You swear the swag will be divided? We all get our share? Yes, yes, yes. But well, listen yes. to me, Major Sholto. And you too, Captain Morstan. If you double across me, I'll break out of you anyway, somehow. And if I do... If you don't trust us, you'd better go back to your solitary confinement. Where is this place? The fortress of Agra. That is the ground plan. The 337 you see there means that from this cornerstone, you count three bricks up, then 37 along to that point. The sparklers are there. Mind you, don't forget, the sign of four. Three bricks up. Thirty-seven allowed. Thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four. Thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven.
Jack Mott, fetch my two sons to me at once. Doing out of your chair. What's happened? Don't forget him, Mother. Back. <laughs> Wheel him back to the fire. For God's sake, keep him away. Don't let him kill me. Don't let him kill me. Oh, Sarah, no one's going to harm you. We'll protect you. Not from Jonathan Small. He'll kill me. He said he would. He escaped a month ago from Andaman. Jonathan Small? Who is he? He's only one leg. The others would. I robbed him of his treasure and killed Marston in a fight over it. Treasure? Yes. That's where our money comes from. Marston had a daughter. Mary, I think her name is, runs a florist shop in the West End. Look. Open the top drawer of that desk. Press the back. Near the corner on the right side. Yeah, I'll keep that. Be careful, be careful. Oh, my sons, don't quarrel over them. What suffering they've caused already. Those are the Rasputana pearls. I want them to go to Marston's daughter. You must also give her one third of the rest. Yes, Father, I promise. Where is the rest? I've hidden it in Pondicherry Lodge. Where? Upstairs, in the... Listen. Listen. Do you hear? Do you hear? That stump. Stump. That wooden leg. No, oh, of course you don't. It's only in my head, pounding there. I do hear it. I do. Father. Ekbar, Ekbar, go outside. There's a man. Stop him. Stop him. He's dead. No one here, sir. Someone just gone in taxi. He never told us where the treasure is. Couple of more jabs of the pink mighty, and the beautiful spectacle of love wearing the Ross Matana pearls will be finished. One more day of this, and I'd run out on you. Well, it had to be done, didn't it? No one will recognize you now as convict number 44730. I'd rather be hung, shot, grounded, and electrocuted than go through this again. Oh. We can arrange that too. Uh. Oh. That's done it. Oh, bless me. Oh, bless me. Keep it out of the way and leave it alone. Let it get dry. You have a look at yourself. You're a masterpiece, that's what you are. And I'm the professor what's done it. Think of the money people have paid to look at you. Well, she looks a bit on the fat side to me. Oh, a bit of fat over your kidneys will keep you warm. I'll make you fat and I'll get my hands on those sparklers again. 
sitting in a cell full of food that that nice little bit of lecture I did there was spread out in the spell, God bless our home. Yeah. I've been listening to you talk about them sparklers for ten years. And I believed you. Broke out of Enderman with you. With me, with only three more months of my sentence to do. If you stick a million holes in me, I'd make me look like a blooming zoo. You've been lying. And if you ain't, let's see the color of them sparklers. Quick, or I'll bet you. What? Now, me now, you know. Be a good boy and do what Papa wants you to. And don't make Papa have to cave your blooming ribs in. Go on, matey. You don't think I spent in that stinking prison for 20 years without getting educated, do you? They said they sent me to Quad to learn me a lesson, and I learnt it. But I've been through Oxford. In the first place, most of the treasure is safe. How do I know? Because old Sholto hadn't got the nerve to use much of it. And how do I know he hadn't got the nerve? Because I looked at him once, and he kicked the bucket. Uh, and why aren't those pretty Sholto boys sent the cops on me? They don't want me to make no noise about the sparklers. For fear the real owners will turn up and claim them. And for fear of losing them, they'll only turn them into cash one at a time. But there are so many of their beauties. So very many. There'll be plenty for us when we get round to collecting. No, matey. There's one thing you'll never know. And that is what a beautiful thing it is to be educated. Oh, I know enough. Enough to keep your mouth shut, I hope. I never did thank you myself for my government haircut. But I can't wear these silken dresses for long. They make me itch. I'll just put on my best Sunday go to meeting prop and give the ladies an eyeful. Now you stay right here in the fun fair and keep your own fires burning. And mind you, keep an eye on Tonga, too. You don't go on exhibition until next week. If I was to say to you, now for the treasure of Monte Cristo and the world is mine, you wouldn't know what I meant, would you? No. Of course, you're not educated. Ten years in the pen and never learned nothing.
Once Quig out of your shelter, you'll be having breakfast with your father in the morning. I'm simply charmed to meet you, Mr. Shelter. My name's Small. Jonathan Small. Heard my name before, huh? Perhaps from your dear father. Nice man, your father. Wasn't he? Yeah. No liar. He was a dirty, rotten sneak thief. A worse cook than him never lived. Did he tell you he was a murderer, too? Did he? What? He confessed. All those things. Just before he died. Huh. Did he tell you all about the treasure? Did he? Yes. Maybe. We've been wasting our energy upsetting the gentleman's house. All we got to do was to ask him where my pretty sparklers were, and he'd tell us. Where are they? I don't know. Huh? Father died before he could tell us. I'm disappointed in your shelter. I thought you too much sense than to play with me. The treasure's hidden somewhere. We've, we've not been able to find out where. All of it? Yes. Yes, 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 all of it. <laughs> Hesitating a little. That means you're lying. Listen to me, you little rat. They're gonna get this stuff anyway. Whether you tell us or not, or whether you die or not. So spit it out. Stop! Stop! I'll tell. I'll tell. Well? I told you the truth. The bulk of the treasure, we, we can't find it. Only the pearls. The Rajputana pearls. Where are they? Promise that my brother and myself won't be harmed. Unless you get funny and tell the cops. Oh, I promise, I promise we won't. Captain Morstan's daughter has them. Well, where is she, huh? She keeps a florist shop. There you are, sir. Your change, sir. Two and six, five and five makes ten. Yep. Thank you, sir. Call again. I will.
You certainly shot that tiger clean through the head. And he was a beauty, too. But how on earth could you know? You're a very remarkable man, Watson. Me? The finest audience in the world. I never cease explaining my methods to you. And apparently your amazement grows deeper every day. But how could you possibly know what I've been thinking? You were looking at those tiger pictures in the paper until your eyes were nearly popping out of your head. Your expression then was unmistakable. Yes, I suppose it was. Yes, you came down to earth and realized that tiger shooting is no longer for you. Very simple, really? Yes, like all great things, Watson. You know, I owe you an apology. You come here for adventure, and I've none to offer you. Very soon, out of London's teeming millions, some distressed person will step up to the door and knock. Ring, Watson. The knocker doesn't function. You should have noticed that. Oh, very well. Ring, then. Ah, she's made up her mind. What? Who? Look. Evidently, you find the young lady's case interesting already. Uh, Miss Morstan to see you, sir. Miss Morstan? Did she tell you her business? No, sir. But she seems terribly upset. Oh, show her up. She's one of your teeming millions, Watson. Miss Morstan. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Yes, that is my name. I'm terribly sorry. I think... I'm afraid I'm going to faint. Right, I'll get some brandy. And a frightful shock of some kind. Thank heaven you were here, Watson. In such embarrassing matters as fainting women, I must defer to you. Thanks. That's better. Now you'll feel all right again in a minute. I feel terribly ashamed. I apologize. Oh. Perhaps I'd better go. And deprive us of the pleasure of offering the assistance you came to seek? Miss Morstan, tell me. Why were you so afraid of being followed here? How did you know? Well, there's hardly a mystery. I simply observed you from the window. Oh. Now, Miss Watson. It's rather a long story. Shall I begin at the beginning? Yes, please do. An amateur investigator like myself can't have too many facts of a case to work on. A number of years ago, my father, Captain Morstan, mysteriously disappeared whilst on his way home on leave from the Orient. Wait a minute, Morstan. Uh, Captain Morstan. Uh, something to do with a convict settlement at um, uh, Andaman Islands, was it? Yes, I remember. You remember? You learn to expect such amazing things from Mr. Holmes. And I'm afraid that completes my knowledge of the first chapter. This was found in my father's belongings. Hmm, appears to be the diagram of a large building. A fort, perhaps. Yeah, what's this? Four names. Look, here are four crosses. Yes, four crosses. When I first saw that paper as a child, I wondered what those crosses meant. And today, when I saw it again on another paper... Again? Yes. That's the modern side of the story. It's all very simple to me. First, we does... Both the shoulder boys in with a nice little bit of cutting round the jugular vein. And for the matter of that, sticks a knife into the Marston girl if she won't tell. Then off we go to South America with the sparklers. It's all very simple to me. When you're done with the three of them, I suppose you're start on the old blooming police force. Now. There'll be no murdering unless absolutely necessary. Can't do much of it without leaving some clue. Eh? Clue. You know what clue is, don't you? Yes. 
something you sticks paper together with. Lady, when we get to South America, I'm sending you to night school. What? Do you want the feel of my boot in your face? It ain't my fault. It's these years' safety razors. Here. What about me having to go with a, with a straight one? Not on my neck. With so many things happening in such quick succession, first one note, then another, then the safe broken open. I didn't know which way to turn. I suppose I should have had more courage, in spite of the warning of death and gone to the police. But I'm afraid I'm not as brave as I should be. But, Miss Morstan, there's one thing you haven't told us. Actually, where are the pearls? Miss Morstan was afraid to trust even her own safe with such valuables. So she's been carrying them about on her person. That's true. I have them here in my dress. Although this handwriting is obviously disguised, the person who sent you the pearls and the one who invites you to this questionable rendezvous in Acacia Road this evening is one and the same. Uh, I should describe him as small, extremely nervous and timid, a perfect example of the homo lepusculus or rabbit man. But the one who threatens your life, he's quite the opposite. A homo tor as powerful as a bull and with great cunning. A killer. An opponent to be reckoned with. And he's only one leg. Mr. Holmes takes such a delight in provoking my curiosity that I swear I'll never ask him again how he makes deductions such as, well, that by looking at a man's handwriting he can tell he has but one leg. Perhaps you can tell us, Mr. Holmes, if uh, the colour of his eyes, if he likes white mice or... Or if he suffers abominably from arthritis. I not only resent your making me appear ridiculous before Miss Morstan, but it grieves me to think, Watson, that you've never read my treatise on the physical and mental reactions of the disabled. For therein I described, uh, with my feeble prose, that the whole physical being of a man who has undergone amputation goes through a complicated process of reorganization, as a result of which his functional characteristics are decidedly marked. His uh, subjective mind, uh, fully conscious of the loss of physical balance, tries to make good that loss by some such expressions as, uh, uh, well, uh, increasing the pressure on the downstroke of a pen, making it firm and straight so the letters stand up, uh, as it were, um, on their own legs. Do I make that quite clear? Perfectly. <laughs> Miss Morstan, I don't want to alarm you unduly, but your homo Taurus friend is unreservedly dangerous. For that reason, may I suggest that you accept my meagre hospitality until the time of your departure for Acacia Road? Thank you so much. Oh, but I don't want to go there alone. It states in your invitation that you will be allowed two friends. May I have the privilege of appearing as one of them? Thank you very much. Well, will you be my other friend? May I? You're not a bit like a doctor. Now, Miss Morstan, I'm going to turn you over to my trusted housekeeper, Mrs. Hudson, who will see that you're made comfortable. Uh, Miss Morstan will dine with me here tonight. Uh, if um, I may be permitted to... Uh, uh, oh, oh yes, certainly, yes, yes, yes. We, we, we'll give Dr. Watson a chop as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to interrupt the violent flatterings of your heart, Doctor, but perhaps you'd be interested to know that never in my career have I encountered a more intricate case. Serious as that? Mm-hmm. You need all our help and perhaps more before we're through. Mm-hmm. And under no circumstances must we allow her to go back to her shop. Shop? She said nothing about a shop? <laughs> no. No, but I think you'll find that she runs a small florist shop in the West End of London. But how can you possibly deduce that? Neatly, but not uh, smartly dressed. Yet she wears an expensive orchid. Orchids are not a suburban trade. Perhaps given her by some ardent admirer. Oh, well, if she had one, she'd have appealed to him and not to us. Besides, fingers used for wiring up flowers become scored, you know, in an unusual way. Yes, I, I think a florist shop. Amazing. 
No, elementary, my dear Watson. Uh, elementary. Good friends, Watson. Case of need. Now, you'll take Miss Morstan to her home. George. Have her changed quickly into clothes that are both uh, warmer and a little less conspicuous. Jimmy. My preparations here will take me about ten minutes, then I'll pick you up. Don't you think we could uh, keep the appointment and leave her out of it? My dear Watson, if we're to catch our fishes, we must use the bait they bite on. But uh, no, there's no... No, 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 it's getting late, Watson. Getting late. Oh, you'll probably enjoy hearing she does run a florist shop. Oh, really? I'm surprised. Tweezers. Oh... Here's your adventure, all right, Watson. <laughs> Miss Morstan, go and knock at the door. Uh, we'll be here watching. Miss Morstan? Yes? Hello? I have two friends. Can you give me your word they are not policemen? Certainly. Come with me, please. Miss Morstan. Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson. So you, you've kept your taxi, I see. Good, good. Your, your journey's not over yet. You've news for Miss Morstan? First, we must visit Brother Bartholomew, waiting at his house. The taxi. If we go along now, I can tell you the whole thing as we go. Come on. And last night, my brother found the remains of the treasure under the attic flooring in Pondicherry Lodge. Such magnificent jewels I've never seen. I at once demanded they should be divided according to my dying father's wish. I told my brother that I should add my share to yours. It was the only way I could repay you for my cowardice in divulging to Jonathan Small your name and that I had sent you the pearls. Oh, well, Bartholomew was white with fury. We quarreled violently and then I went home and wrote the note that you got this morning. You see, I thought that if you were to come and demand your share in person, he dared refuse in case we should hand the whole matter over to the police. You acted wisely, Mr. Shalko. I'm glad you think I've done one right thing. It took more courage than I thought I had to face the daughter of the man that my father murdered. Wait. McMurdo, Mr. Sadhu. All right, Mr. Sadhu. Yes. Thank you. That's all right, McMurdo. Yes. Good night. You're not frightened? Terribly. But rather thrilled, too. Mr. Holmes. Something devilish in there, Watson. Look. Mrs. Bernstone, her lamp. Been dead some hours, I should think. Watson, that's your affair. 
He's been murdered. Please don't move about. Well, Watson? Not a natural death. Tetanus of some kind. Extreme contraction, far exceeding the usual rigor mortis. Precisely. Some powerful alkaloid poison, like strychnine. Mr. Holmes, look, the treasure's gone. It was there on the table. That's the hole we lowered it through. We've been robbed, and he's been murdered. The police, they'll be called in. They'll find out about the treasure and say I did it to get the money. You, you don't think I had a hand in it, do you? Gentlemen, I, I didn't. I, I swear I didn't. I... Steady, steady, steady. Yes. Mr. Shelter, go straight down to the police station and yes. report the matter yourself. Yes. Offer to assist them in every way. Yes. Now it's your wisest call. Now then, Watson, we have a few minutes before the representatives of the law arrive. Ah, I think this look here, do you see? Just behind the ear. Like a sword. Don't touch it, Watson. It's deadly poison. This is a dart that's been shot with such force from a, a blowpipe that before the victim can recover from the shock of the impact, the poison takes effect, causing almost instantaneous death. Such weapons are used by the natives of the Lay Peninsula in the Andaman Islands. Andaman? Yes. Yes, that's pretty conclusive, isn't it? Well, look here. Look here, the same four. Cross it. Sign of four. Jonathan Small. No, possibly not, Watson. Remember, Small's only one of four. But more significant still, these crosses have been made with a tattooing needle. A tattooed man? Oh, huh. well, that's frankly simple, isn't it? Is it? Well, now we know who did it. All we have to do is to catch him. Yes, that's all. It will, will you go out and catch him, and I'll wait here till you come back. Yes. Uh, but uh, where do I go? Exactly. Let's leave jumping the conclusions to the professional detectives. I prefer to employ my usual method of carefully reconstructing the crime in the hope of finding some clue that will lead us to the whereabouts of the criminal. Uh, just stand on one side, will you, Watson, so that your footmarks don't complicate matters. Now, how did he come? And how did he go? The window fastened on the inside. Or the framework solid. No drain pipe, nothing. And he couldn't have come in that way. Yes, but he did. Here's a print of a foot in mould on the sill. And a curious circular muddy mark. Right, there it is again upon the floor. And here again by the table. You see that, Watson? A perfect demonstration. But that's not a footmark. No, it's something much more valuable to us. It's the impress of a wooden stump, my dear Watson. A wooden-legged man? Yes, precisely. Yes, but no one could scale that wall, much less a man without one with only one leg. No, but suppose he had a friend here who lowers a good stout rope. How could he have got in? Not the window. Not the chimney. That's too small. Uh, lend me a hand, Watson. Now we'll have a look at the secret room where the treasure was found. We can surmise that Homo Taurus was here. But the number one man, the one who's skilled in the use of a blowpipe, who is he? The tattooed man. No, I think not, Watson. No one but a native could have such deadly aim for such a strange weapon. The tattooed man is described by both Sholto and Miss Morstan as a giant. So we must look for someone small who could scale the side of a house without making a sound. Oh, there you are, Watson. A disused trap door leading onto the roof. 
No, so I can push it back with ease. Well, that's how number one entered. Yeah, there you are. What did I tell you? Possible. Those are the feet of a child. Not exactly. There's something devilishly like it. Now, let's see where that curious foot went to. Get the impression down there. You know that our toes are generally all cramped together. You see, each one of those is divided separately. Perhaps you'd better rejoin Miss Morstan downstairs, Watson. She might be frightened when the police arrive. You observe the angle at which the thorn struck. Yes, it must have been shot from the attic. It... Oh, bravo, Watson. <laughs> bravo. What's your theory about these footprints? Well, apply my methods, Watson. And you'll probably find that they lead you in directly the opposite direction to that of my old friend, Detective Inspector Athelney Jones, whom I can hear blowing his way upstairs. Yes, sounds like him. Yes, unmistakably. He'll begin by telling me that an ounce of practice is worth a ton of theory and then proceed to arrest everybody on the spot. <laughs> and the house seems as full as a rabbit, Warren. You stay here. Sergeant, have a look at the other rooms. Yes, sir. Hello, who are you? Why, oh, if it isn't Mr. Sherlock Holmes, the amateur. How are you, sir? I'm all right, Jones, thank you. How are you? You know Dr. Watson? How are you, Doctor? How are you? Mm. Well, I'll be off. And what brings you gentlemen here? Oh, just a little private investigation. Oh, I thought you'd given up our line of business long ago. No. <clears throat> no, I, I only take cases too difficult for the official police. Uh, what do you make of this one? Bad business, eh? Yes. You'd hardly thank me for theorizing over it. <laughs> but at sea, eh? <laughs> what I always says is, Mr. Holmes, an ounce of practice is worth a ton of theory. Yes, yes. I, I've heard you say it. Sherlock Holmes will never rest until this mystery is solved. What do you think of this theory, Mr. Holmes? Yes. The fellow Thaddeus was with his brother last. The brother dies in a fit, on which Thaddeus makes off with the money. Yes, and on which the dead man very considerately gets up and locks the door on the inside. Uh, oh, well, uh, there may be a flaw, but uh, <laughs> we can get over that. Yes, but Jones, before you actually hang the man, I should like to point out this splinter of wood. Ah, nasty-looking thorn. Yes. Be careful, Jones, it's poison. It was found in the dead man's head. Does that uh, fit in with your theories? Perfectly. The only question is, how did he depart? Ah, oh, of course. The hole in the ceiling. He knows the house. I suppose you noticed the hole in the ceiling? Uh, yes, yes, I, I did notice it in passing. Uh, there's a trap door leads to the roof. <laughs> there, you've proved my case. <laughs> Pretty quick, eh? I can safely say, Jones, that I've never seen anything quite like it. Uh, oh, an ounce of practice? <laughs> well, well. Constable. Sir. Ask Mr. Thaddeus Sholto to step up here. Right. Oh, no, my dear Jones. Now, Mr. Holmes, I know you like poking your nose in these things, but you better leave this to me. Mr. Thaddeus Sholto, I must ask you to accompany me to the station. It is my duty to inform you anything you say may be used in evidence against you. Don't be alarmed. I think I can engage to clear you of the charge. Oh, you do, do you? Well, you better not promise too much. All right, Sergeant, take him away. I shall want to question the others. They may all be in this. Oh, Watson. Is the girl all right? Yes. Good. You can't have anything further? Yes. That I have to pay a visit to Mordecai Smith. Is that the name of the murderer? No. No, it's the name of the man who's been engaged to help our little band of super criminals to escape. Well, how did you find that out? Well, quite simply, Watson, this rope told me all about it. Huh. I've heard of walls having ears, but never of a rope that could talk. No, well, this one can. I found it on the roof. 
It was brought here by Small and used by number one to get him up the outside of the house. You see, Jonathan Small, like most master criminals, never commits a crime until he's perfected the method of his escape. Of course, with only one leg, this isn't easy. He can't leave by one of the channel ports because the authorities would immediately search all one-legged men. He can't stay in this country, because sooner or later he'd be hunted down. So he arranges to be taken to sea in a fast, small boat and then transferred to some tramp steamer bound for Africa or South America. Perhaps he's already escaped. Not small. He's waited 20 years in prison planning his revenge and he won't leave till he's completed it. He won't leave without the Rajputana pearl, the most valuable part of the treasure. And pearls are easier to dispose of than diamonds and other jewellery. Well, where does the rope come in? Mordecai Smith. Is his name on it? Uh, no, but it might as well be. In the first place, it's been bleached and soaked by long immersion in salt water. If, if you like, taste it, Watson. Uh, no, thanks. No. You see, at this end, there's a splice loop, which bears the imprint of constant chafing caused by a small ship's brass capstan. The rope is made of cotton. It's not strong enough to hold a large boat. And it's of so soft a texture that it has evidently been used to protect a highly varnished surface, which suggests a speedboat or a launch. On the end of the rope used for tying the boat to a wharf, I found embedded a quantity of powdered malt, which led my thoughts to a warehouse where malt is unloaded. Near such a warehouse lives a man that I've known for years, who runs a small pub as a sideline, but whose real underworld business is smuggling. He smuggles contraband to and from boats at sea. Sometimes his contraband are criminals that the authorities are after. Uh, so, you see, I really must go to Mordecai Smith's. Positively amazing. Shall I come with you? Uh, no, Watson, no. You asked for the job of looking after Miss Morstan, so see that you do it. Oh, request Inspector Jones, uh, very courteously, to assign several of his men to guard Miss Morstan day and night. Don't forget, small still at large, and so are his diabolical helpmates. Yes, protecting Miss Morstan's no small task. Appreciate it. Two buttons, like. Right, you are. By the way, where is old Mordecai? <laughs> well, he ain't here. You can see for yourself. That is, if you can see. Yeah, he's always down the river with that tuck tuck in tub of his, I don't know. I bet he is. Uh, the yep. black one. Oh, hey, with the green light. Just where he is. <laughs> but she ain't a tub. Let me tell you that. She's the park of North Dan River. And she ain't black neither. Uh. She's all a lovely cream with two little black stripes around her. Oh, I don't need him. <laughs> Nothing <Yeah>. like <laughs> Named after me. A royal. A royal is a lovely thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. Oh, you like you it? <laughs> oh, come on, you old goat. No. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I don't get it. Back in the place. I'll bet she'll take the old goat down the river to see that new roller where I want to go. No, no, he won't. He won't have no time for you. I'll pay the price. Yeah, hey. he sell his proper customers. Who is he? Now, don't you a nosy old parker, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Besides, you wouldn't know him anyhow, because he's a stranger. He's only got one leg. <laughs> Well, if a stranger with one leg will pay the price, I will an old friend with two. Oh, Thanks. no, he won't. 
Because <laughs> if the old one leaks, he just pays him to stand by to use when he wants him. Why, he's paid him a week's money already and he ain't done the trick yet. We've heard you make it tonight. She'll be ready for me tomorrow. No, he wouldn't do that neither. Because he was here a minute or two ago. He told me he wouldn't want more to care not till tomorrow and perhaps not till the day after. That's what Jim's mind. Oh, well, well right never right. mind, mind him. Mind, I'll have another boat. See, I'll have another one in a better one. Oh, will you? You'll find a better one, my lad. There ain't a better one. Not unless you mean the Florence B, and he can't get her. Florence B? That's right. Yeah, we'll kill him, I don't waste time. Give him his darn trick. Don't have no darn trick. You come on, you old old wrecker. Oh, buddy, with you, wasting my time. Now, what's you going to have to drink? Nothing. No dance, no folks, so no beer. Diamonds in here, Tonga. If Tonga good boy, you get some. Tonga good boy. Put that in a snake box. No one will look for it there. Oh, good. Good, Tonga. Well, wrap a couple of your friends around yourself and keep you warm. Go to sleep again. What do you think you're doing with them fireworks? I ain't taking no chances, no. What's the matter with you? You know, we've seen a ghost. It's worse than that. The cops is after us. How do you know? Went round by the girls back over the florist shop. Cops and plainclothes went all over the place. No mistaking what they're after. Put them up, eh? Come on, squeal. Come on. Let Marston keep her pearls. Let's take what we've got to knock it. Shut up! Crack them up. I'm going to have them all. Sides. Pearls are under the trace. And therefore, easier to sell than the diamonds and the other stuff. Well, give me mine now, and I'll look it. You haven't got a chance to get away with your brain. Well, let's get out of here anyway. Listen to me. How many times have I got to knock into your block? Now, when you do something the law says you shouldn't, don't start changing the new places. It's then that you get spotted. Stick to your business as usual, and look as innocent as an angel. We stay right here in the funfair, and show tomorrow night the same way as we've always done. Me, you, and Tonga. Understand? And tomorrow night. Who, who is it? It's I, Dr. Watson. Oh, come in. Just been inspecting your guard. Got one officer outside the door here, two downstairs, and one in the courtyard outside. Doesn't that give you a feeling of protection? I suppose so. It seems an eternity since this morning. You must try and get some rest. Wipe today clean out of your memory. I'll be all right. I think I'll have a good cry. That'll make me relax. Now I should sleep. If you absolutely insist on weeping, can I offer you my shoulder? I've fainted once today in front of you. I think I'd better have my cry in private. Please go. I feel terribly weepy. Well, now, you let go, sir. Well, Mr. Holmes, well, ain't in, I tell you. All right, Well, I'll, I'll wait. Uh, What's your business? Well, it's none of your anyway. All right, my fine uh, cockalore, and we'll see about that. Uh, Mr. Holmes told me to come here. What for? Because, because I know who's done the murder. See? Oh, do you? Yes. And uh, I've come here for the reward. See? <laughs> Good. If he ain't here, well, then I'll go. No, you won't. Oh, oh, oh. You stay here. Oh, oh. Who are you? Detective Inspector Anthony Jones, Scotland Yard. Well, why ain't you wearing your hat in the house? <laughs> <laughs> uh, onions. Getting fresh, are you? 
If you know anything, you'll stay here until I get it out of you. It's a nice way to treat a person, I don't think. Try the other way, my dear Jones. The lock is reversed. Ah! Truth. Oh, Jones. What a turn you give me. Whiskey and soda, Mrs. Hudson. Whatever have you been doing in that get-up? Attending a fancy dress ball. Yeah. Pleasure before business, eh? I thought you took your detective work seriously. Well, this case is so simple, Jones. It hasn't required much thought. Mm, that's right. I've got the murderer in custody now. Ah, no doubt. Uh, Jones, uh, by the way, I'm expecting some further developments tomorrow. I may need a lot of help. Will Scotland Yard stand by? At your service, Mr. Holmes. Always believe in encouraging you amateurs. Someday you really might find something. <laughs> Who knows? Mm. Flatterer. Will you be at the examination of the prisoners tomorrow? Mm, no. Case couldn't be in better hands. <laughs> That's what I like about you, Mr. Holmes. You appreciate me. Mm. Good night. Good night, John. Oh, I do hope Mr. Holmes' search will be successful. It's been awful cooped up here all day. Under guard like a prisoner. Waiting for something. Heaven knows what's to happen. I've been doing a little detective work on my own. Unbeknown to Holmes, of course. Would you recognize that tattooed man again if you saw him? Yes, I'm sure of it. You know, the whole idea of a tattooed man, tattooing needles, native feet and so forth, sounds to me like a circus. Yes, to me too. Well, there's one just behind King's Cross. A fun fair, they call it. My cook was telling me about it. Would you risk going there with me? I'd go anywhere with you. Besides, I don't think I'm in danger anymore. Well, we can leave the guard here in case they give us a visit. There's just a chance we might find something. And oh, how I'd like to put it over on Holmes. Shall we go? Will you? I'll get my coat. In full eruption. Or later got died on a white horse. No fear. It's only a sentimental bit of work I want. A broken arm, split in two, and bleeding a little. And with the initial B on one side for birth, that's my name. And on the other side, a S for Dolly. S for Dolly? You mean D for Dolly? No, S. Her name's Dolly, but I always called her Sugar. That is a sweet name, to be sure. Ladies and gentlemen, look how the deadly poison does the little tongue. Uh, fondles and caresses him, but it ain't love, it's fear. Why? Oh, she bites off the edge. They've seen it done hundreds of times, and so can you. For tuppence. Look at him. I believe we've come to the right place. A native, you mean? He looks like a murderer. Ah! No! There's a tattooed man! The loudest, the closest to the detective. Oh, Ranger, you simply must see him. There's everything from ferocious animals, dangling the lion's game, beautiful ladies, artist models, which seem to be breathing and moving about with the artistic appreciation of the men. That's the man who bought the flowers. I'm sure of it. Yeah, I'm sure of it. Move up, those men. Move up, those men. Have a look at this. Have a basin full of this here, man. A tough one, boy. You can see the old figure and the old marvelous show. Well, who's coming inside, ladies? Who's coming inside? Come on, let's telephone home. Just a minute, friends. I'll get everything that's dead. Okay, sir. What's that? Off, Mo, Doctor. 
girl from the florist shop. I just seen her with a friend. Are you sure? Yes, and she looked as if she knew me. Yeah. Tony Bird, can't finish your art today. Call again tomorrow, I'll do a nice wreath for you for nothing. Thank you, Professor. You did it anyway. I'll only be a minute. to bring her here. Yes. Then Small's got What? They're on their way to Mordecai Smith. If we need help, bring up Scotland Yard. I'll take a quick look around. Now, see what's happening. We've been looking close around. Somebody's found out man Alfred. Keep your hands over. I was looking for the pearls. She's got them on her somewhere, all right. We'll search her for them when we get to the boat. If she hasn't, I shall never see them again. That's something. Go on, Fred. Faster. Gone. Let's get the taxi. Thousands of places in London. How do you know they've chosen Mordecai Smith? Certain of it. What if they get away in a fast boat before we can catch him? Well, I've engaged the fast the one this morning, the Florence Free. How do you know it's fast? Well, I know it. Don't ask me how I know it, Watson. See what a colossal mistake you've made. I had those fellows, all of them, right in my hand. I only had to discover where the jewels were, and then I could have made my capture. Blow my brains out of them, thought it'd do any good. Yes, well, they haven't been much use to you, old fellow. I'd keep your head, you'll need it. And your fists, too, before we're through with it. Street, two minutes more. Like that. You do it, I tell you. 
Yes, Crayley's warehouse. We'll dodge in there. All right. Get out of sight. Get on with it. I've got tongue to place where you can do the most good. We're going to fight for you if they find us. It's hanging if they catch us anyway. We've nothing to lose. No, but I have. We don't need you. Wise man, Small. Watson. Where are you? Oh. Yeah. Where's Mary? We'll find her. Mary! Holmes, in here! Oh, Miss Morrison. Believe me, I'm never so thankful to see anyone in my life. Yeah. Oh. I'll be all right. Perhaps you think oh. I'm not glad to see you. <laughs> oh, Mr. Holmes. Yes? Small hit a satchel in the, underneath that sack. Oh. <laughs> Are you hurt? No, I'm all right. <laughs> the treasure of Agra. Who's in there? Oh, Holmes. Ah, welcome, Jones. Welcome. Listen, there's a one-legged man mixed up in this and a tattooed man, too. Mm. Oh, really? Really? Well, we've left them for you to have a look at. Uh, by the way, they left this satchel behind. It's probably of no value. 
No value? Why, it's full of sparklers. You amateurs always overlook the important things. Here's Mordecai Smith, if you want him. What's he got to do with it? I want to know where the pearls are. Yes, where are they? Small taken them. Then they're at the bottom of the river, where we can find them. Because now you'll be so terribly rich that I can't even claim you as a friend, much less ask you... What? Sorry the jewels are distasteful to you, Miss Morstan, because I had the pearls. I took them from Jonathan Small when we first came to grips. I didn't want them to get wet. So I'm afraid you'll have to have them back. Amazing. Elementary, my dear Watson. Elementary. Please ask me. Well, you, um... Yes. Amazing. Elementary, my dear Holmes. Elementary. <laughs> 